Um, I can say the decision had been made kind of previously that he was uh, going to go to NECW um, where uh, he would sign a contract, an exclusive contract. Mm -hmm. um, so he would not be able to wrestle for us in the future. Um, the decision came down a little bit sooner than what we thought, um, but it was basically um, a difference in opinion and a difference of vision for what we had in ACW. So you're just protecting the rights, basically. Uh, it, was a, yeah, it was a business decision that was made, and, and uh, it was something that was going to happen at some point anyway. Highlight Davy Cash, uh, once again, not the same with the NECW contract, but once again, it was something where uh, we did not see eye to eye, uh, myself or the company. And uh, it was something that we had to make a decision. It was a business decision, partly business and partly personal. It was I just kind of think, it, and this goes back to the last time he was on the show, and I just had like this little... Was that Pyro or Cash? Pyro. Okay. E either way, think about this. Mm -hmm. Chris Pyro and Hong Swaggo, ACW Tag Team Champion. Well, Hornswoggle would cost too much, and uh, I, Chris Pyro, very, I, like I said, I've known him since the first day he started, very talented, um, obviously not the biggest guy, but uh, from where he came from to where he is now. He's got a big heart. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a big, a big change, so. Okay. okay, Amanda doesn't say much, Matt Magnum. Matt Magnum? Um, Matt Magnum decided to venture over to Top Rope Promotions and um, it was not going to be, it was kind of a conflict of interest where he would work for us and Top Rope so he decided to go to Top Rope. And a gentleman who basically was on top of the ACW Mountain up until his last show and correct me if I'm wrong where he took on Gino Giovanni mm -hmm. and you could tell that Without anything being said, that was the final match for Vinny Nero because Gino called him back in, you know, gave him a few words, gave him a hug, and, and wished him well, which is the way that was that was the class act thing to do. Yep. But as far as Vinny Nero, um, what was the whole situation with him? Uh, Nero, uh, the decision was made to um, to bring Nero in to uh, to drop the title because he uh, he made a debut for a top rope show. Uh, was pinned in the opening match to the guy and uh, we had to make a decision based on the betterment of protecting ACW and its title uh, to part ways with Vinny Nero uh, due to what he did uh, at a top rope show. Um, whether people want to admit it or not, it's two shows that are competing in the same area, um, similar talent, and the decision was made to protect ACW, its title, its wrestlers, its fans. Uh, a tag team that many say haven't really got their due justice just yet because of the tag team gold. And I'm speaking of DUI, Thorne, Kellen Thomas, and Kelly Brooks. Uh, I'd say up and coming. Um, um, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I meant when I said tag team gold, I know they're hungry for it. They just mm -hmm. haven't got the opportunity mm -hmm. yet to be in, a, be, you know, be in the position where they can participate mm -hmm. for the tag team. Uh, they actually, they are, as of right now, currently the number one contenders. Um, so their title uh, shot, once we can get blockbuster Rob Hagen back. Um, well, let me ask you a question, not to jump off topic. Mm -hmm. Why not DOI on the 29th as opposed to the new school record? Because uh, DOI will be signed in a, another tag team match. Um, and that match will uh, pit two other individuals, who I'm not going to say now, but You'll have to come see on the 29th, but that will be a big match as well. But regardless of what happens between the Blockbusters and what happens with the new school Wrecking Crew, uh, DUI will get the title match. I know you got a list. Uh, I have one who I would like to use and one that I am in negotiations with, and that's Natalia, um, formerly uh, a valet for Pride. Um, someone who I am talking with and would like to have debut in the very near future. Okay. Um, another woman, like you said, Nikki Rocks, that would be somebody I'd like to, to bring in. Um, and sorry, I, I don't want to, I'd love to make number three Mistress Belmont for you, 
Uh, but another person that I have had conversations to, with too uh, is Bobby. No kidding. Yeah. So no kidding. Um, I would say those three would be on my list. quote unquote smart individual at one time thought that these veterans had nothing to offer independent wrestling. Would you like to divulge? Huh? Uh, Steve Ricard. That's what you want. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Should just get my mouth shut. No, no, it's fine. It's, I, we ain't pulling no punches here. So, so Baker, Ash, and Perez had nothing to offer? Uh, well, at the time, apparently the veterans were on their way out um, and were not being used. Guys like Michael Foster, Tex McCoy. Um, Redemption. Brickhouse Baker, Redemption. Uh, guys that weren't used here in the area, guys that had been here from day one that, you know, all of a sudden were left off cards, left off shows. Uh, apparently they weren't drawing anymore. Um, now once I came to ACW and was allowed to put shows together for ACW, which is uh, about almost three years now, um, the first guys I called were Redemption, Stryker, um, Stallion, Baker, uh, pyro, those guys. Um, and as you can see, what once was perceived as a backyard company um, was now a company where you have Top Rope trying to take guys like Vinnie Nero and Matt Magnum uh, over to their shows who are supposedly backyarders. So uh, Brickhouse Baker, Jose Perez, those guys, those guys are now helping ACW get to where Top Rope and, or Yankee Pro used to be. I kind of contradict myself because I, I don't think people need to be exclusive. However, there needs to be guidelines and parameters for each business. For instance, a Nero, who is a world champion, at, a heavyweight champion at one time, should not be going 10 minutes away and getting pinned in the opening match of a top rope show. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. yeah, personally. Uh, but as far as we have numerous guys, Scott Levesque is one, uh, Scott Ashworth is another one, um, John Monroe is another one, who work several places. Um, and it never seems to really be a conflict of interest because each business is just trying to do what they do. Uh, they're not in direct competition with us, they're not, you know, down the street from us, and they're not, their goal is not to make our guys look bad, um, which is not what everyone seems to do. So when you look at it that way, then, yeah, I don't think you need guys exclusive. The, uh, the contracts, like, for instance, with NECW, um, you know, I, 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 I've seen their product a couple times. I think they have a good product. I just don't see the need for contracts. I know they're going on TV, um, but when you don't have these other companies, for instance, like ACW, who is on TV, I don't really see the conflict of interest there. But uh -huh. that's, that's their decision. Joe Eugenio, uh, if it wasn't for Joe Eugenio, I wouldn't be sitting here. Um, maybe Chloe Campbell's not sitting here. Maybe a lot of guys aren't in the business. I'll be honest, I started, rest of the spotlight, started out with Yankee Pro and Joe Eugenio mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Yeah, and I, I was there, I remember that. Uh, Joe Eugenio is responsible for wrestling in this area. Joe Eugenio is responsible for 85% of the wrestlers in this area and, and even some outside of this area that have moved on. Um, Did he ever pay you in donuts? <laughs> oh, I can't believe you brought that up. <laughs> and stale entomans is the, uh, the, the correct analogy. Uh, I'll tell you what, Joe is, uh, Joe is called a lot of things, um, some fair, some not, but he, he made independent wrestling around here. He had this place on lockdown. He was what guys now would strive to be. He is what, you know, Top Rope would love to be right now. He's but what Joe ACW would. Joe packed the house. Joe, well, Joe not only packed the house, he had this area on lockdown. This was, this was YPW, even to a, a lesser extent, South Coast. It was that territory. There was nobody else. There wouldn't be an ACW. Um, there wouldn't be an LPW. You know, due and respect to everybody, but that, those companies would not exist right now in this area. And I'll area. give him this, too. There's not one spot that that man wouldn't set up a wrestling ring. No, he set one up in here. He set one up in here. He did. Down the floor. He set one up in here. Uh, okay. Yep. I was uh, Joe. Like I said, Joe Eugenio. I owe everything. Like I said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. You know, he did. He was great for the business. He helped the business, and he was very generous. I can tell you numerous stories. You know, forget the internet stories, but.